Hey guys, The Build Show is on the road today. I'm actually in Dallas, Texas. It's about a three hour drive from my home in Austin, and I thought I'd bring you along for a vlog day. I'm attending Builder Trend University downtown here in a little bit, but before I go to that, I'm visiting a builder friend's job site where he's got a beautiful custom home going in uh, in a gorgeous downtown neighborhood called Highland Park. So the build show on the road in Dallas, let's get going. Good morning, Dallas. Cool looking uh, zip project right here in uh, right downtown looking Dallas on my way to uh, this other job site. Oh man, look at these pretty houses down here. This is a gorgeous part of town. Look at these tree-lined streets. This is a awfully pretty part of town. I don't know if you can see these. Uh, it's awfully bright here, but wow, these houses are gorgeous. This is really well known as one of the premier neighborhoods of Dallas. Just some gorgeous houses. Let's go see if we can find Austin's house under construction. Here we go, here's Austin's house. Let's go see if we can find him. Oh man, this neighborhood is amazing. But check this out. Look at this awesome mock-up that he's got right here. That is beautiful and a big aluminum box like I thought. Here's Job Shack, I bet Austin is inside. Austin! Hey Matt, how's it going? Dude, good so to good to meet you. you, man. Look at this sweet job shack. We got a little shack going. All right, we were gonna do a job site tour, but before we do that, I think we need to see this job shack. Give me a little tour, man. What's the um, what's the uh, video recording going on? So we got six cameras uh, for surveillance, so we can uh, you know not only check our guys, but see who's here working. Uh, see what's going on, what materials are getting delivered. Wow, sweet. And you know what? This is just a Connex box, right? It is. It's just a uh, steel container. Okay. We connected a uh, little AC unit. How smart, man. So AC unit, drilled a hole in the side so you can get some AC in here. You got a little refridge. You got all your marking paint. Some good storage of supplies. It looks like you, you've used some Advantech glue here. Yep. Uh, I noticed your quick drive. Is this all for uh, your subfloor? All of our subfloor. We're using the inch and eight subfloor Vantech. That Simpson quick drive screw. What's uh, what's that right there? What's That's this motor? That's a gas-powered sump pump. So uh, during excavation, when it was raining, we could pump out the basement and get the water out of there so we could keep digging. Gotcha. Oh, man, this is a great job shack. I like the use of a standard Connex box and doing it in a way that's smart. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Before, Check out this deck unit. Before we see the house, we gotta see Austin's truck. Look at this. Keeps us organized, what? on site, you know, storage in your truck. Dang, that is cool. I've never seen anything like that before. So it's just a rollout system. Look at that toolbox. Is that made specifically for this? It's made exactly to fit in here. You can fit a couple of these in here. Take them onto the job, film with tools. Man, that's cool. Holy cow, man, you are super, super organized, my friend. All right, so before we look at the house that also looks awesome, let's take a look at your mock-up, Austin. So what are we looking at here? Matt, we're uh, on this house, we're doing uh, stucco, La Habra stucco on CMU block. Okay. Right here we've got looters from uh, a local shop, Dallas Limestone. All this is carved here in Dallas. Wow, uh, that's cool. I like your job site sign too, which you, we blocked out the numbers so people don't know where we are, but good job. And so you mentioned this is gonna be stucco on CMU. Hopefully you can see that, but he's got a nice, uh, you know, one inch air gap. And then this is like four inch CMU right here, which will get stucco. Now you've got a- We've got a, the uh, Delta stucco and stone drainage mat on there. Yep. But after thinking about it in consideration and looking at this mock-up, since we already have an air gap between our sheathing and CMU block, we don't really necessarily need the uh, drainage mat. Yeah, yeah, that's I totally see that, man. That's good building science, good, good use of material and money there. On a normal framed house, I'd say you definitely want that. But with CMU block and then stucco, you're really doing a top-notch and honestly expensive and good install. 
Now look at this house. Man, this thing is gorgeous. This is going to be awesome. Matt, we're using the uh, Aluma Flash Plus yep. on the entire yep. house. It gives us a really good weather barrier, gives us a tight air seal. And we don't have to worry about water getting into the house. Austin, you've uh, you've seen a build show episode or two. Just a few. Buddy? Just a few. <laughs> Been paying attention. I'm seeing a few details that I recognize here with the Aluma Flash. And man, you've done it beautifully. Look how perfectly stuck and adhered we are here. Uh, I mean, that's the beauty of this system, isn't it? That once you put uh, put this on, it's, it's stuck. Not coming off. Now, did you use primer on this thing we too? Did, of course, we used our primer uh, and got our overlaps about four inches on every edge. Okay. Um, so you can see the overlap right here. This is your this is your four inch overlap right there. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Nice job. We also detailed the bottom with the Blue Barrier 2200. Okay. Um, we use that around the perimeter, and and then you uh, now you've got your windows. It looks like on some kind of a buck system, right? Are they pushed out a little bit? They are. They're, we put a one by around the windows to push the windows out. So after we install the CMU blocks, we don't have a gap between the window frame and the CMU block. Gotcha. And look at those beautiful corbels. Those are those are fake, right? We don't have. Uh... Those are real cedar, Matt. Are those real cedar? Those okay. are real cedar. We primed them and sealed them before we installed them. Wow. That's gorgeous, man. Well done, Austin. Can we go inside? Let's take a look. All right, now this is this is a future front door? What are this we is a here? future front door just during construction. We put in this temp uh, door. Gotcha, temp so door. We, so we don't beat up a steel door. Got it. Now this Advantech sheathing I'm seeing here, though, is that what you uh, sheathe the house with? The entire house is the Advantech sheathing. Okay, cool. Whoa, look at this when you first walk in. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Yes, indeed. These are pretty incredible. So this is the kit that you can buy, right? Right. Archwaysandceilings.com. They're a local company in oh, they're, Dallas. They're a Dallas company. I didn't know that. So luckily we had them out here. We worked together on uh, shop drawings, got everything built in on uh, at their shop. And Goodness gracious. Look how cool that ceiling's going to be, man. I love seeing your string lines everywhere too. That's great. Fold those for light cans. Yep, so you're all in alignment. Uh, and then you can see the back of his sheathing. But the other thing you're noticing right away, these aren't standard uh, two by studs, are they, Austin? No, Matt, we've got all what do you got here, man? studs in the entire house. Oh my gosh. Did you see my house that I built in Austin with uh, all LVL studs? I did, I did. We're doing pretty much the same thing over here. Wow. So this is which product? This is their Boise 2 by well, most of the exterior walls is going to be a 2 by 6 LDL. Okay. But some interior walls are framed with 2 by 4. Correct, yeah. But you're framing those also with LSLs, aren't you? LVLs. Or, L, I'm sorry, LVLs. LVLs. Yeah, yeah. So, laminated veneer lumber, LVLs, just for anybody who's uh, watching and doesn't know, that means the stud is basically like a plywood stud. Right. Which means that, Austin, we're super straight, right? We're super straight. We're super strong. Yeah, and super we strong. We can expect this house to last a long time, don't have to worry about any movement. Yeah, and the other thing I love that you've done is uh, super strong, top-notch materials, but you've also got a bomber waterproofing on the outside. So you've got no issues with uh, water coming in. And if you're watching this and you're not in Texas, be cautious about that Flash Plus. That's really a southern U.S. product because it's zero perm. Man, this is great. Now I'm seeing your windows are strapped, Austin, rather than the typical detail you see. Matt, we did strap the windows. We also took a planer and took a notch out of the framing so yeah, we install our sheetrock. We don't have any sort of bumps in our sheetrock around all the strapping. Yeah, well done. Now what's this cutout on the floor? We're not slab on grade here? No, Matt, we actually have a full-size basement under here. Uh -huh. uh, this is for a see-through fireplace. Oh, man. It's steel right here. So you got steel to support the weight of that fireplace. Probably a some kind of packaged masonry unit going in there, I'm assuming? It is. It's an isochron unit. Isochron, okay. Gotcha. So now we're coming through this main entry, and what is this room? Matt, this is the rotunda. Oh We've got a huge my dome gosh, up there. look at that ceiling. It's pretty sweet. Wow, awesome. That's also from those archways and ceilings, guys? That is, yep. They uh, built it in their shop, and we threw it together on the site. Wow. That is awesome, dude. Your framer did a nice job on this house. Thank you. I got I to gotta point this out, too. Uh, we use something similar in Austin. I've not seen this brand before, but this is your temp power box, right? It is. It is. We got one 
uh, cord running outside and then everybody that's working can power up on this and we don't have to worry about a bunch of extension cords going outside. Yeah, no, I'm seeing uh, the subfloor here is two different subfloors. You got plywood in this area and then it looks like the rest of the house is Advantech. Why the, why the lip here? What's the difference in subfloor? Matt, so we're putting natural stone in the entry rotunda and the entry area. So we wanted to have a smooth transition between our three quarter hardwood and our natural, st natural stone. Got it, okay. We, we actually put a double layer of plywood on here and uh, laid it so according to the North Texas or North America Tile Council to their natural stone so we get the full warranty uh, from everybody and we're also using the Schluter uh, Dietra membrane on here. Oh wow, you got a Schluter Dietra, that's awesome. Oh, let me turn off my phone. <laughs> you know who's calling me, this is actually pretty funny. It's the, uh, it's the Polywall rep, Dan Thomas, calling me. He <laughs> Dan. Must, he must know that I'm walking through a house with all lemon flowers. He must. He's been here a few <laughs> times. So Schluter Dietra, which is a decoupling membrane, so when you walk on this, we've got basement underneath us, so we're hollow. That way you're not going to have any uh, uh, any movement in that tile, you're going to be right. nice and tight. We will. Now, hold on. What is this? What are we seeing here, Austin? This is a steel freestanding staircase. It goes from the first to the second floor. Oh my gosh, just when I thought it, was, uh, it wasn't going to get any bigger or bolder. Look at that winder, all out of steel, free floating. All out of steel. Dang, man. So how did you build this, Austin? So a local company, Trinity Stairs, built it here in uh, Allen. Okay. And we put it together on site. It comes in a couple sections and gets bolted together. We use a duck lift to put it up and uh, this whole stair area is actually getting American clay. Oh, is it really? Okay, so clay plaster. I did a stair not too long ago similar to this, but we framed ours out of wood. This is not going anywhere in steel. It's interesting to see how the guys uh, lightened the uh, steel a little bit too by, by cut, having these cutouts in there, which right. kind of like a truss system are going to make it nice and strong. Exactly. Can we go see the, uh, can we go see the basement? Let's go check out the basement. All right, cool, man. And look how your... Uh, uh, your round framing here is all through uh, LSLs as well. I hear some sheet metal guys working down here. Maybe a little loud, guys. Dang, look at this giant basement. What's the uh, pit for? It must have an elevator going on down here, right? That's an elevator. We've got an elevator going from the basement all the way to the second floor. With our pit and shaft to go up there. Got it. Oh, yeah, the sheet metal guys are working here. Check that. Dutch guys are rocking. We got some trunk lines being built over here out of solid metal. So we're actually using a bunch of rigid duct down here in the mechanical room. Okay. So we've got it uh, going attached to the ceiling and running to where we need it in yeah. the basement. And and you're using uh, two by four floor trusses like we see all the time in Texas. We are. Those northern builders don't use these, but down here in Texas, we uh, we, yeah, we love them. And check out the ceilings down here too. Holy cow, Austin, you got another archways and ceilings. You got ceiling details for miles on this house. This is a pretty cool wine room we've got right here. Okay, so we're in the wine we're room. We're in the wine room. Over here on the left is the wine cellar. So we'll have about 2,500 bottle storage over here with these glass doors. Got it, got it. Let's walk upstairs where it's a little quieter. While we're walking up there, Austin, tell me about your uh, basement waterproofing. What did you do for waterproofing So we used on the PolyGuard 60 mil peel and stick. Okay. Uh, with, it's fully adhered. We also used a perimeter French drain going to a sump pump. Got with it. two sump pumps to get the water out of the ground and away from the house. So the sister company to this uh, Aluma Flash product uh, is PolyGuard and they make a bunch of commercial products. So you've got that down on your foundation which is all the way down there 10 feet we do we also have their drainage mat against the uh the polyguard on the base. i gotta point out a small detail too y'all look at that he's sloping, sloping all his all sills. his sills too so these all these um studs underneath the window here the cripples cripples jacks no cripples uh are cut at a five degree angle so that when his pan gets put in it's sloped perfectly Man, you're you're doing a great job in this house, Austin. Impressive. Thanks, thanks Matt. I like your um, uh, your temp railings too. I use those in Austin too. That's a um, gosh, I forget the brand name of those I'm things. Not sure either, but yeah, they're perfect. They're easy to install and they keep it safe. I'll put a link in the description for those. We use those in Austin too. They sell those at my uh, East Side Lumber and Decking where I buy all my stuff. It's gonna be hard to temp rail this though. It is. We're trying to figure out what we should do if we should bolt it uh, to the seal. 
Yeah, I can see that. All right, so upstairs now, you've also got some tall ceilings up here. We do. We've got some tall ceilings up here. You can see a mock-up for a radius ceiling with a drop down. Ah, okay, right here's that mock-up. Yep, we're having the designer come take a look Ooh. and make sure this is exactly what the owners and designers So this radius taking. would go all the way around this perimeter wall probably. Exactly. Dang, that's cool, man. What an incredible rotunda though. Now you can dumb. now we you have, can see uh, it up close. A light cove around the top. We also have a fixture, a hanging chandelier that we can adjust with the motor. Be on a motor to drop down. Holy cow! Talk to me about insulation. What are you doing on this house? So basement, we're doing a two-inch closed cell. Okay. On the base exterior basement walls. Yep. Attic, we're gonna do open cell foam. Okay. All the exterior walls, we're gonna use blown-in, sprayed-in uh, rock wool. From okay. American rock wool. Gotcha. We'll also use it on interior walls, on sound walls, and uh, inside. Got it. So rock wool on the walls. Um, you've got plenty of air sealing with the uh, uh, Advantec sheathing and then lacing that on top with the um, Aluma flash. So we don't need to, to use spray foam for air sealing there. That's right. However, it can be beneficial in your band joist areas where your trusses come out, all that kind of stuff. Right. Man, this is a gorgeous house, Austin. It's big too. How many square feet is this place? It's about 12,000 under uh, air condition. 12,000 feet. 14,000 under roof. Dang. Now you actually screwed these Advantech floors up here, right? We did. We used the Simpson quick drive to uh, secure all the one in, inch and an eighth subfloor to all of our floor trusses. We okay. also used the Advantech uh, blue adhesive the okay. foam. So that subfloor glue. Um, First time using that? Have you used it on other no, projects? No, we use it on all our jobs. Okay, so you're a convert, uh, convert, I should say. Yes, yes, we believe it works. I mean, when you try to pull up a piece of uh, subfloor that's been glued down, it tears that Advantech up. You cannot reuse it. That's how well it, it adheres. Yeah, it adheres really, really well. And look at this expansive, uh, I guess this is family room uh, this kitchen This is a kitchen, area? great room area. Oh my gosh, look at your job desk too, man. That's a giant plans, designer elevations, furniture plans, trust plans. I like it. Everything we need to keep the guys going. I see some primer. Is that the primer you're using on the uh, outside? Uh, it is. It's the uh, advanced I mean, uh, part of the poly wall blue barrier. It is. No, not blue barrier. The Luma Flash. Luma Flash. Right. Yeah. That's the and primer. What's your rollers? See, you got some good rollers to roll that down. Got to have the the rollers. Smart. And this plan desk, are you just building this on the job site? We are, we are. We're, we're building on the job site. On each job, we'll have a desk about this size. Uh, it's enough room to keep a full set of plans and some storage underneath. It's impressive, man. Hey, let's walk outside, but in the meantime, tell us about uh, Nixon Custom Homes. So How long have you guys been around? Nixon Custom Homes was started in 1990, 1989. My father, Alan, started the business, has been building custom homes in Highland Park, Park Cities, and Preston cool. Hollow area for quite a while. So you're second generation builder then. That's second awesome, generation. man. I grew up on the job. That's cool. All right, so I'll use my shadow here to uh, point. Uh, look at this so we've got a copper. copper. Flashing around our crawl space underneath the inside right here. Uh huh. We basically notched the concrete around here and put a flashing into the concrete so we don't have to worry about water getting in uh, off of this porch. Man, that's a great detail. So where he's got crawl space, what he's doing is he's cut uh, his his uh, copper flashing and let it in. He's got a sealant under there, and then when he puts his stone down, he'll put another bead of sealant probably on top of that, right? Right, yeah, we'll run another bead of blue barrier before we put our stone down on here. Mm -hmm. This copper's tucked up the wall, and we've got a flash another, with another piece of uh, Aluma flash, and then sealed that joint with the blue barrier. Beautiful, man, love it. Let's, uh, let's walk out the back. I'm curious to see what the uh, back side of the lot looks like. So you're on an alleyway here, aren't you? We are on an alley. Dang, this is a tight lot to have dug such a big old basement, isn't it? We did. So Matt, we actually had to drill about a hundred shoring piers on the sides of the property before we could excavate. Uh, so we could hold the dirt back on the neighbor's properties. Wow. You can see over there, there's some piers sticking up and they're run down the sides of both property. Oh, so you put those in first before you actually before dug excavated. the foundation. That's correct. Dang, that was some work. Yeah, they're about uh, 16 foot, 12 inch piers. Oh, and look, we can see your uh, your polyguard here now too. Yep. And you've got their Arroyo uh, drain, drain board too, right? That's right. Yeah, that's killer, man. Nice job. 
So this this product here, 60, 60 mil, I think, yep. really thick. You've got good overlaps on the seams. And then you've got their drainage board here with us. It has a filter fabric on it. And at the base of that 10 feet, you've also got a, um, uh, a French drain system down there too. That's, That's right. A, Matt, we can't forget our termination bar. We, we forget that and don't oh, seal it right, up. Right. We're so, gonna get water down behind the poly guard. So you're covered with the sealant, but talk to me about a turn bar. So you bar can see a metal doesn't know what it is. You can see a metal turn bar that gets screwed into the concrete. Okay. And that keeps water from getting behind that peel and stick. Because once water gets back there, it's gonna lose that adhesive yep. and the uh, potential of water getting behind there and leaking into uh, the foundation. Well done, Austin. Look at that. So. Uh, that's that metal bar he's talking about, which is um, probably mechanically fastened and then basically glued on. That's right. Uh, with a polyguard sealant on there as well. That's right. Dang, man. I love it. Let's walk out the back. I'm curious to see what this alleyway looks like back here. What a job site tour, man. There's so much to see here, Austin. There's a lot going on here. You've uh, you've seen a Build Show episode or two, haven't you, buddy? I have. Big, <laughs> big follower. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. It's fun. It's fun to learn a uh, lot of good things on the build show. Uh, it's been good watching and, and knowing you, Matt. It's sure fun to see some good details on uh, on other job sites. Awesome. Look at this too. He's got cedar jams here. He's cut them at the bottom so they won't uh, so they won't rot. Look at this framing in the garage. This is a big old garage. It is. We've and got plenty of room for car lifts or any sort of storage we want to put in here. Yeah, car lift. I can see that. Look at this too. This is this shows off the beauty of those tall. Uh, LVL studs, right? That stud right there, perfectly straight, even though we're, I don't know, 14, 16 foot tall in here, something right. like that. We don't have to worry about the framing. And you can see his floor trusses here too, which allow you to run a little bit of duct work in there, no problem. You can also cross those floor trusses with some duct work. There's probably a ceiling vent, uh, or pardon me, a uh, floor, floor vent. vent right there. Talk to me about uh, conditioning your job sites. Did I see a big old box? You out did. there you did Matt. we've got a five ton unit on a trailer so that we can condition our job sites once we get our finishing trades in here you know you want to have all your materials on site and yep. conditioned to the climate that it's actually going to be installed and used in man this is you're doing such a good project austin i'm Thanks, really man. impressed it's been fun. uh so Austin and I are actually heading from here over to, we're a few minutes late, but we've got Builder Train University downtown Dallas. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for Austin's contact info. Follow them on Instagram too. They're doing some great work up here in Dallas. And if I mention anything specifically product-wise, I'll try and put a link uh, on there as well. But let's go see what's happening at Builder Train U. I'll see you over there. Okay, next stop is the Sheraton. I'm heading to uh, Builder Trend training i'm a little late i missed the first session but i think i'll make it in time for the second session so let's go see what we can learn about uh, build a trend just had lunch with ty and christopher over here we're headed to tracking job costs at builder trend university uh lunch was actually quite good wasn't excellent it, enchiladas and fajitas but the best part of lunch was hanging out with other builders and reminiscing about past clients past mistakes past days on production job sites Recessions. Recessions. <laughs> Predicting the next recession. Anyways, I'll see you in the next session. Builder Trend set up their accounts, so on and so forth. So if you guys have any questions about Builder Trend, we're definitely good people to ask. Feel free to stop by after class. Let's uh, get things underway here. Uh, I'm going to introduce each of the panel members. They're going to come up and they'll take it away. But first, let me introduce who's coming up on this panel. First up, Matt Reisinger. He's the CEO of Reisinger. CEO, apparently. He's and he's making a video as we speak. We're, there, we're gonna actually throw this on YouTube, Tom. So say hi to YouTube, everybody. Hi, YouTube. Tom, builders are the best people in the world, aren't they not? They are, best except, people. Except for you, That's you're also the best person in the world. That's right, all YouTube. YouTube. Yep, hi YouTube. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. We're gonna switch to that camera up there. Uh, so Matt, tell us a little bit about you know the, the evolution of uh, you and your business. And, we were just looking at a picture of you from 2006, and a lot has changed. So yeah, like minus 30 pounds and a better haircut. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, all right, Dan. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a custom builder down in Austin, Texas. Uh, I love these crowds because you guys are all the conversation I've had so far has been, gosh, my business is dramatically similar to yours in many ways. Uh, but we're a custom builder and remodeler. We focus on 
getting leads through architects uh, in Austin. So about 80% of my business comes from an architect who says, hey, Matt, we've got a good client uh, that's interested in doing this whole house remodel or this new home. We want you to come in and interview for this job uh, at the schematic design, which is like a you know napkin sketch on the project. And we've got our architects trained to call a builder early on in the project and not send it out to the traditional three bid system, which always leads to uh, uh, an unhappy client in the end. And, uh, and so that's my business in Austin. I've been doing this for almost 25 years and about almost 15 of that has been in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm a, what I would consider a mid-sized builder. We've got uh, three project managers, two assistants, uh, a couple guys that do labor, some guys who do steel and carpentry work in our jobs, uh, and a small office staff to kind of keep all the balls in the air. And then the, the weird second job that I have is making YouTube videos, uh, which I started 11 years ago. So I'm an overnight success on YouTube. Uh, and uh, I did it because I wanted to market my business. And I think that may be one of the questions that Dan's going to team me up with. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take it real quick if you don't mind. But uh, I started doing social media and YouTube so that I could, as a new builder to Austin, I'd moved in from out of state so that I could promote myself. And uh, it's turned into a life of its own. But uh, I've met several YouTubers here, actually, that have uh, smaller channels, which is where I was not that long ago. And I would tell you that, that uh, social media, whether it's Instagram, which I use mainly to reach architects, or YouTube, which I also use to, to reach architects and now prospects as well, has been super helpful for my business. Uh, because people get to know you on whatever platform you're on, whether it's Instagram or whether it's YouTube. And people generally do business with people they like, right? You probably like your Builder Trend people, right? We love the guys that came and trained us on Builder Trend, and uh, we love our coach. They're personable people that we enjoy talking to, and that's a big reason why we stay with Builder Trend and love Builder Trend is because of the people. And the same is true with why we get hired as builders is because people like you and want to do business with you. They're going to be married to you for a year for construction and maybe the next 10 years for warranty or service or remodels or additional work. So set your egos aside is what I always tell people. It doesn't really matter how many likes or follows you get. The key is putting yourself out there so your prospects who will find you can get to know you. Sorry for the long answer, Dan. I didn't even ask you a question, so that was good. I like that. That was good. Okay, y'all, that's about a wrap here in Dallas from Builder Trend University. What a great trip. Easy drive for me and Austin to get up here. However, there was builders from all over the place that came to this training. There was even an Alaska builder that came to this training. These guys did a great job. One day, some amazing training on all kinds of different parts of my construction business and how to use Builder Trend to make my business better. But you know the other surprising thing, when you get 400 builders in the room to talk about their businesses, you get some great side conversations at lunch and in between sessions, talking about how do you get clients to sign change orders? How do you get clients not to bid with other builders? How do you get them to sign a professional services agreement? All those great things and some great war stories as well. I just really, really enjoyed my day here at Builder Trend University. Big thanks to those guys for sponsoring my videos too. They're a new sponsor for 2020. So check out a link to them in the description. If you're not currently using their software, you should definitely get a demo and find out what these builders have already found out about what a difference it'll make in your business. I've been on them for two years now and it's been a dramatic change to my business. Also want to thank Austin from Nixon Custom Homes for giving me that job site tour this morning. Man, what an impressive young dude. 26 years old and he's absolutely killing it. You know, I've been doing this almost 25 years and he's already at my level. Can you imagine what he's going to be like in 20 years? That's one of the fun things about being on YouTube is I get to mentor a whole generation of young builders. And honestly, I've barely met Austin, but I feel like I know him already. And he's certainly watched a lot of my videos and adopted a lot of the techniques I talk about for best practices and building a, a really well-built house. So what a fun day in Dallas. Time to hit the road, but if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.